Well, after I got the Orchard and I messed with it for a while, I thought to myself, I said, hey, you know, it sure would be nice if I made a bed for it, a laser bed that could go up and down and adjust instead of adjusting the laser. See that adjustment knob there, the Allen wrench? That Allen wrench knob right there is exactly why I don't mess with the focus on the laser itself because it stays set and I don't have to worry about whether or not it focuses. All I have to do is adjust the Z-axis from that Allen wrench screw right there. Well, there's one flaw with doing this. What I did was I purchased one of those lab uh, table jacks, as you can see right there, and the table jack is not sturdy enough do not make the mistake of purchasing a lab table jack it will not work it wobbles and will ruin your focus or double the focus on your on your laser you'll get a doubled image if the if the table moves so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to putting it on a platform and risers and then i thought to myself i said well you know hey uh a camera would help me put place my stuff faster so that I don't have to spend time moving the board around and placing things or or whatever I'm working on. So I got myself a camera, a light burn camera. They're about 80 bucks. I'll post it in the links. Then I looked at it again and I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to need something to mount that thing with. So I took and I got me some 6 millimeter acrylic and I drew up and cut out this stand out of solid acrylic for holding the, the uh, laser camera. Now, I'm going to do an upgrade. I'm taking this jack out, okay? This jack's gone. I'm going to put it back on a solid base and put risers underneath it. And, uh... As far as the uh, placement of the Niji laser goes, I am making an entirely new mount. See that mount there? That, that black 6 millimeter mount? I am taking that off and putting a brand new mount on there that will allow the Niji to be close enough to the bottom that just a simple slide of the Z-axis will put you in range pretty much wherever you are. I'll post it later. I'm not done with it. Uh, let's see. I caliper everything, so I know where everything's at. I know the millimeter distance. And I'm, it's just a cheap caliper, but it's effective for doing this. Alright. Uh, now what I, what I did was, is I made, I made sizing gauges. And or depth gauges. That one is, the, the one on the far left is 49.5 millimeters. 50 millimeters is the maximum focus. And then the next one is 47 millimeters. And the next one is 45 millimeters. So if you're cutting down through 5 millimeters worth of material, you can focus it at the 50. Then you can focus it at the 47 after a few after a round or so. Then you can focus it at the at the 45 and finish the job. You know, usually about uh three or four passes sometimes five but this acrylic stuff is really really tough to cut and uh, the good thing about the Niji is that it has that it has that air that forced air so the Niji blows downward it doesn't suck air up into the laser it blows the air out and away from the laser with a some with a, with a simple type of air assist the fan itself does a 40,000 rpm blow and it's uh, regulated by the by the circuit on top to decide how fast or how slow the fan needs to blow. Which, you know, is going to maximize your fan life because, like, it's not going at full speed all the time. Anyhow, uh, this is the first part of this video. And I'll do the second part of this video after I take it off my brand new stand and put it on another brand new stand. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll get to that as soon as I finish that up today. Well, as you can see, 
I've redone my board, removed the lifting plate, placed permanent feet at each corner. I've placed springs on the wiring assembly so that they stay straight up and down as they go back and forth. I replaced the standard Ortor plate that came with it and rebuilt one in light burn to fit the Niji laser. I won't need the uh, lifting platform simply because the Niji laser goes up and down the z-axis at that point right there where the Allen head wrench goes. And thanks to the thanks to the tie straps and the springs, my cords don't get in the way. My electrical wires stay straight up and down and flat. I've used two long tie straps to the inside of this and three long tie straps to the inside of this because it's longer. Now I'll show you the homing procedure so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm still going to use risers for my rolling rollers and my cutting bed. You notice that the straps stay up out of the way and up off the board and they go straight up in the air where they belong. Nice, huh? Alright. Well, anyhow, that's pretty much it now. Uh, I've got it the way I want it. You will have to you will have to move that section there or add that little piece of board so that you don't bump the rail. But other than that, you should be good. I appreciate your views and uh, like, subscribe. Thank you.